Welcome. This is All Dating Reviews. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. In today's video, I'm going to tell you why Mr. Sass got kicked out of the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas and how he really should have handled it. Grab your popcorn, get you something cold to drink, because this is going to be a good video. Let's get started. The video starts with the host asking, who approved this for you guys? Let me interject by saying that he could have easily ended this by stating who approves his filming. Let's continue. While this occurred, Mr. Sass continued to assert that the host was being aggressive. Mr. Sass was not far off, as the host did appear to be excitable. After this point, the scene transitions. We now arrive at Mr. Sass receiving a business card from the host, who we now know as Matthew. Be mindful that we don't know what their exchange was before the scene transitions. All we have at this point is what appears to be the conclusion of this exchange, where Mr. Sass says, Matthew, the next time we encounter one another, I hope it's more respectful. But by then, we'll have a sense of who I am. He continues, Right now, I'm just a stranger to you, right? Matthew then asks, You want to tell me who you are? Mr. Sass cuts him off to continue. Right now, I'm just a stranger to you, right? Before you know who you're talking to, you should think about how you talk, especially when you're so aggressive. Matthew assures him, Sir, I'm just letting you know. And before he finishes, Mr. Sass interjects and reminds him that they are leaving, and he signals with his hand to stop talking directly in front of Matthew's face. Understanding Mr. Sass's body language, Matthew responds by saying, Don't tell me to shut up. Mr. Sass says, I didn't tell you to shut up. And Matthew quickly reminds him of the hand gesture and corrects Mr. Sass by saying, Don't do this to me, clasping his hands together like the closing of lips. Up until this point, we see agreeable body language from Matthew. One example of this agreeable body language is when we see Matthew nodding and allowing Mr. Sass to speak. Keep in mind that he was well within his power to get security at any point during this interaction. Matthew realizes this approach isn't working as Mr. Sass is discontent with leaving without having the last word. So, Matthew recalibrates his approach and establishes authority by saying, We are not here to be friends. I'm here to let you know that you cannot film here without public relations approval. Do you understand that? He then goes on to thank Mr. Sass, and Jabrizi interjects by saying, So aggressive! Matthew maintains his stance by reminding them again, You cannot film in here without public relations approval. Mr. Sass then threatens Matthew, declaring that, You can't create a problem for me, but there is an infinite number of problems I can create for you. A flustered Matthew then asks for his room number, probably to report him for his blatant threat just moments prior. They leave, and that's the end of that. Let's talk about how a saint should handle that. Mr. Sass always emphasizes hierarchy. Keep in mind that Matthew was the authority in this situation. What Mr. Sass did is quite common, and there is no deficit in the number of Karens that lash out at establishments for their rules. For example, many establishments still require masks, regardless of one's vaccination status. What good does it do to argue with the manager for reminding you of the rule? You could be fully vaccinated six times over, but if their policy requires that you wear a mask, who eventually wins? What would you have to gain by arguing, but I've been vaccinated six times, and it's no longer mandated anyway? Their house, their rules. Now back to the lesson at hand. How should the saint and the sinner, or more appropriately, how should a saint have handled this? A saint should have exited to comply and to self-de-escalate the situation. By all accounts, they were in the wrong, both Jabrizi and Mr. Sass. And if Mr. Sass truly felt disrespected, it was well within his rights to exit the situation and report Matthew. Let's not sugarcoat it. Mr. Sass was in his ego. He had to go out of his way to stress that he was of some importance. 
Mr. Sass is the same guy that used his clout to get a few boys ahead in line at a packed restaurant. He's the same guy claiming to be the mayor of Las Vegas. He felt powerless. If it were me and I had a room there, I would have escalated my concerns to Matthew's boss. Better yet, I would have just called his boss and got permission. That would have indeed been a boss move. But he didn't have a room there, and he didn't have the status he thought he had. So he went home, skipping down the Las Vegas Strip because he had no choice. Here, we have a video of him being a Karen. And the fact of the matter is that Matthew had dominion over Burton in this instance. He told Burton the stipulations, and Burton had the option to oblige or exit. Remember what I told you guys about PR in the fake BBC video? Remember what I said about needing PR permission? Matthew told Mr. Sass to his face the same thing I said to all of you in that BBC video. So you know I'm talking about what I know. Look, Burton shows to be combative rather than lead. He seems to be a sensible man. So let's take a pragmatic approach. Do you want to be somewhere you are unwanted? We saw Burton gaslight and pull out every disgruntled customer excuse there is. Marquette was upset that he didn't have the authority to overrule Matthew. And this is evidenced by him asking, do you know who I am? You see this with fledgling celebrities all the time that get arrested. People like him have a diluted and romanticized version of power dynamics. Add this to an inflated ego and false sense of self-importance, and it can be disastrous as we witnessed. Mr. Sass is the same guy that had my Bridget reveal taken down on a privacy violation. It can be a privacy liability for an establishment to allow patrons to film without a permit. We're talking about a luxury establishment that celebrities frequent. All it takes is for someone recognizable to see themselves in one of Mr. Sass's videos, and they can sue when for their breach of policy, which is to have PR permission to record. Why is PR permission necessary in this instance? Again, he was in a luxury establishment with presumably professional equipment. They have a brand to protect. Imagine the public thinking that Wynn endorses Mr. Sass. That would be a PR's worst nightmare, and they'd lose a lot of business. Which, again, shows you that he either has a deluded sense of self-importance, or he didn't have the common sense to get permission. We're talking about a 35-year-old that has been on TV and around notable figures, yet he carries himself like a desperate YouTuber. All in all, Matthew was justified, as Wynn's guest policy states, when resorts requires appropriate and respectful interactions between our guests and employees in our resorts, the company reserves the rights to trespass anyone exhibiting behavior, language, or clothing that at our discretion is inconsistent with the company's behavior standards. If you ever get kicked out of an establishment, leave. It's not worth it to wish unemployment on someone for doing their job. As Matthew said, they are not there to be friends. He was sending a clear message that all that chatter didn't matter. Leading up to the culmination, Matthew was sympathetic and agreeable, and he listened to Mr. Sass for longer than he should have. You may not get that same grace. Be respectful to authority figures and of your safety. Be saintly and not heard. Thank you for watching.